of monotheism. Yeah, yeah. So if you look at Deuteronomy 6.4, when Moses says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one, what do you understand by this one? Do you mean like in a sense which is uh, an indivisible, yes, unique an God? Source, yeah. Uncreated. But as a multiplicity or as a as a as a unitarian God? A unity, yes. As a no, not unity. Unitarian God. Uh, as a, a as a. So indivisible. That means he doesn't have persons. There are not multiple persons in the Godhead. So we don't believe in this triad or Trinity or triune God. It's kind of. It, it, it expands itself out and if you want to talk about I mean, it where does it expand itself show me where which prophet in the entire old testament advocated anything other than a unitarian god a monotheistic pure monotheistic god monotheist. so, well, the, the, here's the deal like the egyptians believed in a monotheist yeah but i'm not asking outside the old testament i'm saying within the old testament nine or, nine or seven lesser netters that created that began to you, you have drifted outside the Old Testament again. Within the Old Testament, did any prophet advocate a God who is anything other than pure mono, monotheistic? You keep drifting outside the Bible all the time. Egyptians, Hindus, all these things. to you quite easily that the Old Testament patriarchs were Egyptian. No, no, show me where in the Bible it says that. Well, it's all over the Bible. Show me one Except place the in the Bible. Kings, it's the whole of the story of... The question is, show me where they worshipped anyone other than a monotheistic yeah, God. This is, this yeah. is Pure monotheism. Can prove, I can prove this you keep saying you'll prove, but you haven't brought anything from the Bible yet. He, he say, I think there's a miscommunication. Because what do you do is he you keep going outside the Bible. He's saying something different. He's saying, yeah. all right, wait, wait, what's the proof that these patriarchs, who you claim are Egyptian, worshipped anyone apart from God? No, they, that's right. They, they saw a multiplicity of lesser parts of the one God in inter interaction. Show me from the Bible where he says that, any prophet God. Because this is your claim, it's not from the Bible. Sure. I, I get what you're saying. And we, we you have to concede that this, that from the Bible, even any language you use from the Bible, it has to be from the Bible. If it's not there, then you are just saying something which is outside the Bible. You know, there, there are two points, there are two ways to talk about God in the Bible, right? Uh, Hashem and Elohim. Hashem is oneness, is that one. Amplitude, infinite oneness. And Elohim is a plural. It is many, many things. It is the one and the all at once. Do you know Elohim can also be used for men, for angels, for yes. false gods? Yeah, but it's a so it's, it's not, it's not, it just means it just means deity. It's not categorical. No, no, by the way, it's not, it's not plural. Do you know Moses is, Moses, if you read at Exodus 7, 1, it says Moses was Elohim to the Pharaoh. What does that mean? Was it plural or singular? Moses was Elohim to the Pharaoh. Exodus 7, 1, I give you the reference. So your theory that Elohim is plural is false. No, no, it's not false. It's only for people, if people don't know the language, Hebrew language, in Hebrew language, it's very similar to the Semitic languages. Oh, yes. The singularity of plural depends on the verb that's used in, alongside the noun. So when you talk about Elohim, for Moses only, Moses is one man or many? One man, yeah. yeah. So why was the term Elohim used for him? Well, but he, was, he was called Elohim himself. Yes. Because he's one, of, he's one person who came down out of that one spot and became... Uh, now, now, you're, now you're going back into outside the Bible, sorry. You keep doing that. You know what you do? You, you talk about things from the Bible and then you extrapolate to things which are outside the Bible. You can't just mix and match. It's not a candy store. So, Jesus, so God creates in the beginning, right? He creates a multiplicity of different things. Okay, and they are creation itself. They are apart from God. But they, also, they are also kind of of God. Right? No, they are not. So when you're a creation, when you're a creation of God, you have no part of God in it. Because God, by definition, is eternal. He was not created. What you're saying is something which is completely he different. He created the sun. Sorry, he created the earth and the heavens. Yeah, so these are the creations of God. Okay, so they are implicit in his... And he saw that it was good. And he rested and chilled on the seventh day. Okay. Those things were so so let, me, let me use the same analogy. Let's say there's a baker. He bakes a cake and he says the cake is good. And then he takes a rest after baking the cake. Yes. Is the cake the baker? 
No, that's, your, that's basically your. That's, that's, that is. Split himself up. Who split himself up? I see he's going again into this mythology. But logically, that's a good analogy. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the Hebrew, the whole of the Hebrew alphabet, the LF Bay, right? Um, what you can do with the, that, the alphabet very quickly is one shape that's seen from different views, viewpoints. And that one shape can you, you can fit on the human hand. It's actually a physics. It's a, it's a shape of pure physics. The I have no idea what you're on about. I know. Right? Yeah. This is the beautiful okay, how many system. letters are there in the Hebrew alphabet? 22. Right. How is it one shape? That's it. It's one shape. How is it it's one shape? Seen from different, so Aleph, all bait to break open. Right. Are you explaining the meaning? And, How is it one shape? We, we're able to see now that there's um, a beautiful reference to the physical world in the letters, but also the, the way that the language. My friend, how is it one shape? Are you still haven't answered that? It's an amazing projective. Um, I don't think you're making metaphor. any sense when no, you're no, no, when no, you're, no, you're saying words that 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 does not correspond works. to the language in this scenario. You're saying they're one shape. Yes. How is the alphabet? The Even if it's 22 letters, how is it one one shape? Because if it was one shape, then you couldn't write a word. Forget about a sentence. That's what Aleph Bait is doing, creating a distinction between inside or the all, and then a breaking. Have you moved into Kabbalah now? Is that from Kabbalah? Yeah. So this is, you know, this is what they do. The symbolism in Kabbalah is what he's bringing in now. Nothing to do with the Torah here. <laughs> You're going everywhere. <laughs> But the point they're trying to get back to again and again yes. yeah it's is the monotheism yeah. is that it's, look no, it's, I believe it's, monotheism. no but you don't you said you you said you got divinity in you that's not monotheism like male and female i believe god is a oneness is both is god has got nothing to do with gender he doesn't he doesn't need to yeah but no but if you believe this look look you did he not say that you have divinity within you okay how is that monotheism because that Jesus has spoken and, and, and come into the hearts of believers or the believers. You said Jesus doesn't exist. You said Jesus doesn't exist. And, and, and How is he coming to you? Himself. Jesus right. didn't exist according to you. How is he coming inside you? No, that's right. Jesus <laughs> doesn't exist in corporeal in a, in a historical form. As a, Are you guys going to the pub? Where are you going? Pub. I'll come with you. No, no, no. I'll, I'll, I want to come with you. Two yeah. minutes. One minute. One minute. Sorry. Um, yeah. the, look, the, the, the point which I was making in the beginning, and I think Hashim's making as well, is that fundamentally, whichever way you look at it, monotheism is the message of the Old Testament. Okay. And monotheism is the most logical method, uh, message, but, but with Jesus, as you're claiming to be divine, that goes against monotheism. Forget Jesus, he's saying he's divine, he's saying everyone is divine. Yes. Well, no, Not only Jesus. Because of Jesus. In a bit of divinity, we can have the experience of the divine one and the Jesus, the Christ, the Krishna consciousness that, that helps us expand our consciousness. You know, Jesus, you haven't answered the question Sabur asked you. How, do, how would you reconcile the fact that Jesus himself worshipped God? I don't believe Jesus existed, but I believe Jesus comes as a spirit and hits us in the heart. Does, does the Father go. exist oh, for you? Sorry, man. Thank you so much. Does does it? It? We'll do this again, yeah? <laughs> we will. Yeah, all right. Take care, mate. Take care. Um, it was great speaking to you. I, yeah, yeah. I would want to know more about this Gnosticism. Religion, uh, Gnosticism. Yeah. Oh, I'm happy to explore. I've got books, and no, right. Can you Thank show you us so the so book? Uh, yeah, yeah. Sure. Have you seen this before? No, I haven't. It's it's scripture in the Stars. And this is just a book that helps me understand. Who's the author? A guy called Marty Leeds. So all of these things that are motifs in the, um, the New flood. Testament. So yeah, crossing the feeding the five thousand, the parables, many of the parables, um, death and resurrection as a as a as something that's imprinted on the heavens as well. Where it look up into the heavens, you'll see the stars conveying a story. So you're reading this. You should also read a, uh, the Quran. Would you want a copy yeah, of the Quran? You got one? Okay. But you, should, you should read it. Why don't you read them and then we can discuss from that next time? How about that? Yeah? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, take care. Thank you. Nice yes. one. Bye -bye. Um, I thought, you know, maybe it's good if you give a message that when it comes down to pure monotheism, it's something that you can't escape, whether you look at Old Testament, New Testament, or logic.
Yeah. Yes. Even what I was the point I was trying to make is even from a metaphorical point of view. Even if he's saying like Jesus didn't exist as a real person and he's a metaphor. Yeah. Even from that point of view, monotheism makes more sense than Jesus being divine. Absolutely. That's the reason he was all over the place. You know, when you start saying that, oh, he came into my dream or seeing in the stars or a, revelation. or a revelation. You know, all these things are just only he can prove to himself. Yeah. It is not something which is objective. You know, people have such subjective experiences in every religion. Forget about religion. In fact, people who don't even believe in God might have su such experiences. So whom are you going to believe? You know, you will be always in confusion, like the way he was. Because he, he said many times, oh, we are going all over the place. He couldn't focus on one topic at a time. And every time we asked him, he would go somewhere far beyond he, the actual he had to do that because he didn't have the solid grounding yeah exactly but yeah. also one of the things i said to him and i want you to comment on this is he went from atheism mm. to christianity yeah. because christianity is what's been around in the religion of his ancestors but it's not even christianity some sort of gnosticism which normal christians don't believe in mm. i said to him you shouldn't just stop at the first religion that you come across when you yeah absolutely yeah he said he has copies of the quran the fact that he just has them doesn't make any difference unless he reads them. Yeah, yeah. So you need to obviously. And thinks about it. Yeah, you need to explore more. And Gnosticism is is something which the early I don't, Christians rejected. I don't think he's a Gnostic. Though. Well, he, he he is actually from many no, no. of them because they would they would incorporate many of the mythological beliefs, and they from the language he uses, he does have a lo lot of Gnostic ideas. It's not Christianity, so I wouldn't Gnostics, call it Christianity. No, yeah, Gnostics believe Jesus was real. There's different Gnostics, right. so it's not one monolith. Within Gnosticism, they have different branches as well. So yeah, it's, it's definitely not uh, grounded, as you say. And that's the reason you would start believing in all this mythological stuff and start to make sense. Because a lot of what he said is actually is from Hinduism. Oh, really? Yes, that the divine within you. So you know when you hear a Hindu say Namaste, he's literally saying, I bow down to the divine in you. And this is what this guy was believing in. He was actually making a Hindu symbol. Like. Yeah, yeah, because that's that's what you believe in, because you believe in all this, uh, especially mentioned reincarnation as well. Yes. And that God is one, this he mentioned consciousness, which is the Brahman within the Hindu. That this the only reality is the ultimate Brahman and this is so yeah a lot of Hinduism uh, maybe Greek mythology maybe Gnostics which we, they took from all these different combinations you know, I guess. interesting Hashem. yeah this is popular nowadays I don't think it's popular but maybe well, it's growing new age people yeah the interest yeah you're right the interest no is rules. gaining it. And, yeah. and you can't be wrong yes because you don't have to prove anything everything goes yeah so new age people love this stuff true, true. May Allah give them hidayah, that's all we can we'll say. Stream again. Yeah, Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Make sure you guys subscribe to Dawah Wise and to Brother Sabur Ahmed's channel as well. Jazakallah khairan. You switch it off? It died. Oh, it died? Okay, yeah, yeah, no so problem. It's fine, it keeps the recording.